Hello everyone and welcome to the debut episode of 2016 of The Next Issue. I'm your host, The Power Trip, and today we are taking on a special topic in preparation for the upcoming movie season. And that special topic would be effects that the movies themselves have had on comics. Now, as you guys know that I'm not really the person that does a lot of the movie stuff here at the Culture Cache, but movies do have a very huge influence on their comic book continuity counterparts. Try saying that a few times fast. And whether it's power shifts or characters taking on a mantle only to lose it abruptly, or even some characters coming back to life just at the right moment, there's no denying the effects that the movies themselves have on a comic book storyline. To the point now where a lot of writers actually plan their stories. Well, comic books get planned usually about a year or two in advance, sometimes even more. But because of this, when you see a movie release date, say like Captain America or Deadpool or Superman vs. Batman, you can best bet that just in time for that movie to hit, everything's going to be slightly close to how it should be in the comics to set the set the mood right, so to speak. So if you start off, say, a storyline a year ago with, for example, Superman losing his powers, guess what's probably going to happen really close to time for the movie to start uh, to come out, to release, so to speak. That's right, Superman will more than likely have his powers back come the debut of the movie. Now, one thing you'll notice over time is the movies sometimes will have a pretty good effect on things, even introducing characters that were never there before, or helping some characters that have been around really gain their push that they never had in the comics, really upping the sales, so to speak. Whereas in other ventures, the the movies don't really help the comics very much, or because of some politicking backstage, the comics might get a downward push, in play of the movie being not made by the people that normally would have the rights for it. A lot of these changes have been, for the most part, pretty good. Some of them just kind of weird, though. Uh, One of the best examples being, one of the more widely popular ones actually being, Spider-Man's Organic Web Shooters. Now, as all of you know, in the uh, the first three Spider-Man movies, Peter didn't have the web cartridges that everyone's known him to have for years in the comic books. And so, because of this, several years afterwards, the people writing Spider-Man decided to do something similar in the comics and give him organic web shooters through some pretty crazy story writing themes here. But it they're... Their argument being the fact that everyone was more used to that version of Spider-Man. Now, given that didn't last too terribly long, and he's already back to the web cartridges, but this was them using things, elements from the movies to see what does and doesn't work on the readers themselves. Another character that got a benefit, actually a huge benefit, was Blade, believe it or not. See, when the movies started up, the movies were actually one of the best Marvel movies, or highest ranking a lot of people have. A lot of people love the Blade movies. But the big problem being that the comic book version of Blade didn't have any of those abilities. So, of course, when the movie picked up and was so popular, they had to find a way to give Blade these superhuman abilities. All he had at that point, basically, was immunity to vampire bites, as well as a couple other things, but he couldn't go out in the sunlight. He didn't have superhuman strength, believe it or not. None of those amazing things he had in the movies, so they had to basically write that in there. Going from that, depending on how many of you really enjoyed the Guardians of the Galaxy, I bet you wouldn't have known that before the movie, Star-Lord was more of a old war veteran that was actually working for the bad guy from the movie at the time in the comics though and so because of how well the movie did that definitely changed pretty quickly and he was 
rewritten, or I guess you could say character type reboot for him. I don't think they actually de-aged him from what I remember, but they definitely gave him more of the personality of like what he has in the movie. Now, much like Harley Quinn from the Batman the Animated Series debuted in the cartoon and then later, because of her popularity, became a huge character in comics, Coulson from the Marvel Cinematic Universe actually got his debut in the movies and because of his popularity became a big character in the comics. With him, he brought about a very big strange storyline, though, in the fact of, you see... Nick Fury, played by Samuel Jackson, is not the Nick Fury that comic readers have grown to know and love for many years. Um, in fact, depending on when the real debut was here, he was either based off of the Ultimate Nick Fury, or Ultimate Nick Fury was a little bit more based off of him. Either way, because of Jackson's portrayal of him in the movies, they had to do something about it, or they felt like they had to do something about it in the mainstream Marvel Universe. A lot of people kind of figured that the ultimate Nick Fury was going to eventually take over for the original Nick Fury, but that actually ended up not being the case, even though that would have made more sense than what did happen. Instead, they introduced a character that ended up being his, the original Nick Fury's illegitimate son, and was basically Nick Fury Jr. Losing his eye in the storyline to where he looks exactly like Samuel L. Jackson's character in the movie. This brought about their way of being able to bring the, the movie popularity home to the comics. Especially with the storyline of Original Sin, they were able to kind of give the original Nick Fury a pretty good send-off and really give that that handing off of the torch aspect to it to the new Nick Fury Jr. Now this is just several several tastes of what what the overlying plot is for this week and next week's issue is so I'm going to leave this video off with the question how do you guys out there the fans enjoy these changes do you actually like it when the companies make these changes from the movies to the books? Would you rather them stay their own separate ways? Has it gotten too predictable or do you think it actually affects the story in the books too much to know that whenever the next Avengers movie or DC movie comes out that no matter what you're reading and no longer how no matter how long the story has been going on chances are everything's going to go back the same as it was beforehand just in time for the movie to come out and you can pretty much plan that and see that in the solicitations and stuff would you rather see them not do such a thing to play up the movie to keep the storylines that much more unpredictable to make them more readable in a lot of sense or do you just not really see one way or the other on there would you know do you actually even prefer the characters from the movie to kind of cross over or the characters from the comics to take on those personalities and those roles and be more affected by the movies. How do all of you feel about how the movies affect the actual comic continuity? Feel free to leave us comments and feedback and we'll get into this topic even more next week for the next issue.